Hey everyone, today I just wanted to make a video talking about how to construct some simple and easy jazz vocabulary lines. This video will be geared at beginning to beginning intermediate players, but really could be helpful for anyone. We'll be focusing on three fundamental concepts, arpeggios, enclosures, and what I like to call line closers. To get the most out of this video, you'll need a basic understanding of functional harmony, that being diatonic chords and scales. If you like this content and want to help me make more videos like this one, please hit that subscribe and like button. It really helps me out. Also, make sure to follow me on my social media outlets, Facebook and Instagram, to keep up to date with the newest content that I put out. Lastly, I'm open for online lessons. Give me an email through my website at nathanborton.com. With that out of the way, let's just jump right into it. The first thing I want to do is talk about arpeggios. For those that don't know, an arpeggio is just all the notes of a chord played up or played down. This concept is heavily used in the jazz idiom. It is important to know your diatonic arpeggios start on every note of the arpeggio. This will let you easily connect lines together in the future. So if I was playing a C major 7 arpeggio, you should be able to start on C, E, G, or B. So if we started on G, or if we started on E, The second part to this puzzle is something called enclosures. For those that don't know, an enclosure is a group of notes that enclose a target note. So if I was going to enclose E, these notes around it could be considered enclosures. Again, this concept is heavily used in jazz and is a must know. Here's a helpful tip. If you start your enclosure on an upbeat, it's going to be an odd number of notes before you hit the downbeat of your target tone. If your enclosure starts on a downbeat, it's going to be an even number of notes before you hit your target note on a downbeat. The last element we are going to use is what I like to call line closers. These are essentially just bits of jazz vocabulary that you can use to close or end your lines. Today we are going to use just two. Remember, it's not about how many licks that you know, it's about how well you can use the licks that you have. Okay, let's look at this in application. So the trick to putting all three of these concepts together is to think ahead. When you're driving a car, you don't look at the hood of the car when you're driving, so you don't want to play jazz like that. You always want to think ahead. Look at what's in front of you. Look at what's coming up. The lines today will be over a 2-5-1 chord progression in the key of C. Here's the process. First, you're going to play the arpeggio of the 2 chord. You can start on any note of that arpeggio. Next, you're going to add an enclosure to any note of this arpeggio. It could be on the first note, or any of the other notes. Remember, which beat we start on will determine the number of notes in our enclosure. Then we want to enclose or hit the next closest chord tone of the 5 chord, from the note that we just ended on in the next measure's downbeat. This is why it is important to think ahead. Lastly, we want to lead into one of our line closers. Make sure you know what note they start on, as well as what beat of the measure they start on. Does it start on the third of the chord we're playing over? Does it start on the fifth of the chord we're playing over? Does it start on beat one or two? Or possibly does it start on the upbeat of beat three? These are things that you should figure out beforehand. Now that we have our process laid out, let's construct a couple lines using it. Here's our first example. One, two, one, two, three, four. Here it is, played slow. One, two, one, two, three, four. Okay, so first we go up our D minor 7 arpeggio, and then we do a two note enclosure to the fifth of that chord, which is A. Then we walk up the arpeggio till we get to the end of the measure. Mm -hmm. 
we landed on F, so we have to find the closest chord tone of G7 that's closest to F. So below F is E, and above F is G. G is a chord tone of G7, so let's go there. Next we go up our dominant 7 arpeggio, starting from the root. Then after that we have our line closer, which starts on the sharp 5, as well as starting on beat 3. Make sure to play this on different string sets and different octaves. Alright, here's our second example. One, two, one, two, three, four. Here it is a little bit slower. One, two, a one, two, three, four. This one starts on the third of our minor arpeggio and then encloses the fifth. After that, we walk down the arpeggio until the end of the measure. Then we look at which chord tone is the closest to the note that we stopped on. So we stopped on C, the note above C is D, the note below C is B. Since B is closer to C, because it's a half step, let's go there. Then we walk up our dominant arpeggio, starting from B. And then we come to our second line closer, which starts on the flat 9, as well as starting on beat 3 of the measure. Once we hit the flat 9, then we play our line closer. I hope you found this process to be helpful. It's not a substitute for learning jazz language and transcriptions, but I believe it can jumpstart our learning process by being able to have our ears recognize these types of lines. Make sure to compose your own licks and ideas using this concept and run it through all the different keys. If you like this lesson and want more content, make sure to like and subscribe. Also, I have free lessons on my website, nathanborton.com, under the blog section if you're interested in more content. Thanks for watching, and remember to always keep swinging. Thank you.